back in 2003. See, at least they had um, the belief that they couldn't just do it. They had to kind of try to sell it a bit. So although they had no evidence that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, and the all on the inside knew that, they had to at least invent the evidence by saying there were. And so we had the uh, dodgy dossier in Britain, and um, it was felt necessary that Colon Powell, they call him Colon because he's full of shit, Colon Powell um, had to appear before the United Nations with his pictures and his little vials to sell the idea that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't. Now that's bad enough, but we've gone beyond that now, where no evidence is necessary. Just the claim, that's all. He's killing his own people. Uh, evidence? It's classified. Ah, so you haven't got any then? Well, well, no, 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 we know you've got no bloody evidence. You're making it up. You're making it up because of a agenda that has been unfolding in terms of current events in the Middle East since at least the year 2000 and actually long before. And so you say Russia was involved in hacking the US presidential election. Evidence? It's classified. So you haven't got any, and so it goes on. Um, there have been many low points in the last week, but, but one of the lowest for me was when um, Tulsi Gabbard, a Democratic Congresswoman, and from what I can see anyway, one of the few people on Capitol Hill with a brain on active duty, refused to accept the lies about Assad being responsible for using chemical weapons on his own people. She didn't say it didn't happen. She didn't say it did happen. She said, show me the evidence because you can't do what you're doing and not produce any evidence in support of what you're claiming. Now, that was one of the few um, balanced, sensible, intelligent statements that have come out of the mouths of politicians this past week. But what happened? Big wigs in our own Democratic Party and Clinton apologists said that she should be um, removed from Congress because of what she said, not accepting the official story with no evidence. This is the madhouse that we now live in. There's no common sense, no balance, no need for evidence. And if you ask for evidence to justify um, a mass missile attack on another country, then you're an extremist. This is the inverted society that I've been talking about um, all these years. And then, and then you have the media. <laughs> this is the media that in 2003 and in the run-up before was selling the lies of Bush and Blair to justify the invasion of Iraq. That same media now knows, people on the inside would have known all along, but all in the media now realise they were lied to. Now, two things about that. First of all, the same people who lied to them about no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq were the same people that told them the official story of 9-11, which has been used to justify all these uh, invasions under the so-called war on terror. But the, the media now accept they were lied to over Iraq. But 
call people um, conspiracy theorists if they question the official story of 9-11 that came from the same people. And secondly, having been lied to so blatantly to justify an invasion of Iraq, they're now buying the same lies with even not, not even made up evidence, no evidence to support the attack on Syria. It's extraordinary. This is the media that um, ever since Trump was elected has been uh, calling him a liar and, and, and endless other things. But now, oh, yeah, well, they believe him now. Why? Because he's dropped bombs on people. That's, that, that shows you're a, you're a real president. It's like that, um, that CNN host, um, what's, he, what's his name, Farid Zakaria, who said after the attack on Syria, this is the day that Donald Trump became president. But it's not the day Zakaria became a bloody journalist. So let's have a look at what I will call the coalition of the vacuous and the coalition of the sheer friggin' evil. Look at the players in this. See where the real power is. We have Donald Trump, a narcissistic man-child, totally clueless about the world, uh, but has um, a, a massively um, inflated ego to almost historic proportions, but anyone with an ego that big also has a fragile ego that can't even let um, comments on Twitter go without feeling asked to reply. He's president of the United Bloody States. And so he is a figurehead who um, is perfect for the, the coalition of evil around him. He's also a hostage to the demands, requirements, and agenda of Israel, the most pro-Israel uh, president, uh, possibly in American history. And think of the competition, not least via um, Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, who has known Benjamin Netanyahu since he was a child. Then we have Rex Tillerson, the um, Secretary of State and Exxon uh, CEO. Again, clueless about the job he's doing. Um, contradictory statements virtually every day. Says one thing, says another, says one thing, says another. They must be catching it off Trump. And he is saying what those in the background are leading him to say, just like all these vacuous people I'm going to go through briefly. Um, then we've, oh, vacuous. Not enough. The, um, the UN ambassadors for the US and the UK, Nikki Haley and Matthew Rycroft. Mr. and Mrs. No Evidence. Mr. and Mrs. Um, have you got that piece of paper with the words on that I have to read? That's all they're doing. Reading scripts that other people have written for them. Uh, Nikki Haley holding up uh, little uh, uh, pictures of, of horrific scenes. Um, what does that mean? That means they're pictures of horrific scenes. Just because you're holding pictures up doesn't mean the person you're blaming for what happened did it. Just like Colin Powell with his bloody vial. Um, so we have um, uh, uh, Rycroft and Haley, who, who are just pouring out whatever they're told to pour out at the UN. Then we've got Boris Johnson. I find it hard to say, but I have to, because unfortunately it's accurate. He's the British Foreign Secretary. I mean, buffoon Boris is foreign secretary at this time um, who tried to get uh, countries to impose more sanctions on Russia this week because of the Syria attack. 
because Syria is supported by Russia. And uh, the evidence, Boris, uh, it's classified. Yeah, all right. And this is what, uh, this is what, <laughs> this is what Johnson said this week. Russia must stop acting as a lifeline for Assad's murderous regime. This is the same Boris Johnson, who with the Foreign Office and the government in general, is supplying arms on a mega scale to Saudi Arabia to um, slaughter um, people in Yemen in that extraordinary carnage. This is the same British government that supported the Americans in going into Iraq and going into Libya. And actually, the two of them were behind the um, triggering of the uh, so-called civil war, proxy Western war, in Syria. The hypocrisy is utterly stunning. Then we have, we have a defence secretary in Britain called Michael Fallon. Another um, software program in a suit, and you know, I can save. I can save the television networks and the media a, a lot of uh, time and money, because all they need to do is get Michael Fallon um, in front of the camera just once, and get him to say, "I agree with the Americans." And then you can play it on the news whenever anything happens across the range of subjects. Because that's all he says. That's all he does. So you've got, you've got these uh, vacuous front men and women. And then behind them, Who's really pulling the strings here? OK, first of all, you've got the neocons or neoconservatives um, dominated by um, Israeli supporting um, Zionists and others um, who were behind that organisation, the project, the New American Century, that in um, September 2000 listed all these countries that are now being picked off, including North Korea, by the way, and um, Libya, and Iraq and Syria. And they're now um, in there with the Trump administration. Then you've got um, the um, Secretary for Defense in the United States, James Mad Dog Mattis. And um, he was involved in the Gulf War, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, and was a central figure in the horrors inflicted in Iraq on Fallujah by the American um, military. This man is now at the top in the Pentagon. Um, this is an article by Aaron Glantz at the Center for Investigative Reporting. And it's headed, Did Defense Secretary James Mattis commit war crimes in Iraq? And this is what um, Aaron says. Retired General James Mattis earned the nickname Mad Dog for leading U.S. Marines into battle in Fallujah, Iraq, in April 2004. In that assault, members of the Marine Corps under Mattis's command shot at ambulances and aid workers. They cordoned off the city, preventing civilians from escaping. They posed for trophy photographs with the people they killed. This is the guy who's now running the Pentagon deciding who gets bombed and who doesn't. Um, he goes on, each of these offences has uh, put other military commanders and members of the rank and file in front of international war crimes tribunals. During the siege of Fallujah, which I covered, he says, as an unembedded journalist, uh, Marines killed so many civilians that the municipal soccer stadium had to be turned into a graveyard. 
In the years since, Mattis, called a warrior monk by his supporters, repeatedly has protected American service members who killed civilians, using his status as a division commander to wipe away criminal charges against Marines accused of massacring 24 Iraqi uh, civilians in 2005 and granting clemency to some of those convicted in uh, connection with the 2006 murder of a 52-year-old disabled Iraqi who was taken outside his home and shot in the face four times. Is what's happening now starting to make sense in terms of current events? These actions, um, Aaron Glantz says, show a different side of Mattis uh, than has been featured in most profiles published since his nomination as president-elect Donald Trump's defense secretary, which um, have portrayed him as a strong proponent of the Geneva Conventions and an anti-torture advocate. Yeah, okay. Is it any coincidence that it's under this guy, Mattis, that this mother of all bombs was dropped on Afghanistan uh, this week? The biggest bomb ever dropped that wasn't nuclear? I think not. Alongside Mattis, around Trump, the man-child, He's a guy called um, uh, H.R. McMaster. He's a, another bloody general uh, who um, is Trump's national security advisor, brackets dictator. He was involved in the Gulf War in Iraq, in Afghanistan. Trump's also given homeland domestic security to another general, um, John Kelly. And alongside this crowd around Trump, pushing this agenda are the uh, intelligence communities in uh, the United States, also uh, in Britain. Uh, there's the administration of the State Department and the Pentagon and the Defence um, Ministry in Britain and uh, the Foreign Office. And, um, of course, it, behind the scenes, you've got, um, you've got Israel pushing this same agenda, or they want the partition of Syria, have done for decades. And um, so this is the force, the force is much deeper in the shadows controlling this lot, but this is the immediate force around the uh, coalition of the vacuous that we see in the, uh, the public called politicians that um, is behind all this. And the idea that um, Trump is running the show is ludicrous. What is happening, um, as I uh, said in the um, interview on the Richie Allen show last week that you can see on my um, YouTube channel, is that a script's being followed, starting with the project for the New American Century in um, 2000, listing these countries they wanted to regime change, said they needed a big event like a new Pearl Harbor to justify uh, picking them off. They got 9-11, just by coincidence, nothing to worry about. And they've been picking them off ever since. And because um, Russia came in and threw a spanner in that works by supporting um, Assad uh, against the, the uh, Western-created terrorists, um, the situation was getting difficult for the this this plan because... Syria, with Russian help, were pushing the terrorists back. The idea was the terrorists would remove Assad. And so, just at that point, we have, he he's killing his own people with chemical weapons, which was claimed before and then shown, um, actually, to be uh, terrorists that were doing it under the technique I call problem-reaction-solution. Create the problem get the reaction, it's terrible, do something, and then offer the solution, which is the solution this week, it was bombing a canteen with 60 Tomahawk missiles. It's incredible, isn't it, um, that we, we have a president this week talking about that attack and emphasising how when he was telling the leader of China what he was doing and what he'd done, 
the central point of the message was how lovely the bloody chocolate cake was they were eating. We really do have a very dangerous man in the White House because he is clueless and he's a clown, which allows that around him to call all the shots. And it's been a head shaker for me this week to watch um, that part of what calls itself the alternative media that's been supporting Trump and urging people to, to vote for him. And, 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 and um, not that I was a Clinton supporter. Either way, the same things will be going on because of this hidden hand. But they were urging people to vote for Trump. Um, Trump was the, the, going to be this new messiah uh, that was going to put everything right. I mean, the naivety of it was just stunning. Um, and, you know, in the last few days, um, some of them have been running for cover. Oh, Trump, no, no, I never said vote for him. And others are still, still trying to make excuses for him. A Trump that has come in, put generals the military in charge of domestic positions, key domestic positions, uh, or civilian positions at least, in terms of the Pentagon, etc. And has handed the US economy to Goldman Sachs. And he's